Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Optimal Plus with Doug Elder, who's going to talk today about improving test efficiency and device reliability. So, Doug, as we get into automotive, as we start getting into some of the industrial applications, they're very, very concerned about quality, and that's even creeping up into uh, cell phones these days. How do we improve that? What sort of problems are you seeing? So, thanks, Ed. The, uh, what we're looking for is, um, you know, using data to you know, further look at the types of defects or failures that people are seeing. And we're trying to do that with a lot of different data sources. And so what I think tradition, traditionally happened with, you know, semiconductor manufacturers is you used, you know, test data that you had at wafer sort or you had e-test data or final test data, and they were kind of siloed. And then you had maybe system level tests or burn in and you know, all that stuff was individually looked at, but it wasn't brought together and looked at as a whole. And so what we're seeing at Optimal is that, you know, based on our architecture, we're able to go and take those different data sources, bring those together in an open, you know, data lake type of environment, and run a lot of, you know, bivariate, multivariate analytics against it that allows us to start, start to see some trends in maybe the recipe back at the wafer level, you start to see trends in terms of drift, in terms of the parametrics of the device. And so you can start to get down to that second, third, fourth order of magnitude of detail because we're collecting more and more data that we're now uh, able to correlate across different data sources. And the amount of data that's coming through is just growing leaps and bounds yeah. too, right? So now you have to not only deal with volumes, you also have to deal with different types of data. Right, so the complexity of the data sources is another issue. So what Optimal is able to do is we're able to take that data, data engineer it into a format that we can do something with. So not only are we able to bring different data in from different data sources, we're able to engineer that in a way that we can provide our analytics to it that allows you, again, to do this correlation across multiple data sources, multiple you know, um, test types or, you know, different steps in the process. So, you know, for example, we're doing more in the front end and bringing in inspection data, defectivity data. We're bringing in metrology data. We can bring in CD. And, you know, once we find use cases that take advantage of that and correlate that with tests, we can start to bring it in from a lot of different sources. Let's drill down into this. Sure. How much is being left on the table right now? How much efficiency can we add into systems and into reliability, into improving the data that's coming out? Well, I think there's a lot on the table. You know, again, I think, you know, semiconductor companies have traditionally been really good at collecting data. But they're, you know, but the, when, when I look at that, you know, historically, it's sort of that first order or second order of, you know, savings or efficiency or defects that you're able or quality that you're able to find. But what we're now being, you know, with the advent of the, um, you know, the, the architectures that we can, you know, data architectures that we can put in place, there's a lot more of data that we can collect and a lot more correlation that we can do. And then we can create a real-time feedback loop that allows you to take advantage of those um, data systems and sources of data. So, for example, in the case of Optimal, you know, we have a, uh, a central location, which is, you know, typically... Um, located at the headquarters of our customer and that that central location is you know where you through a interface you know our portal will take a look at the data that's coming in and create some rules that you write out to the edge which exists in your manufacturing facility somewhere okay and that edge where we're running or we're creating these rules that we're pumping in through the edge allows us to then take those rules, collect the data off of whatever the equipment is, whether it's a fab piece of equipment, or it's a tester, or you know, in some cases it might be a wave solder machine, or uh, ICT, or whatever it might be, and we're collecting that data, and then we're taking that and we're sending it back to the central location, and we're interpreting that and maybe creating a new rule that we pump back through the system. So we have a closed loop system that allows you to Con consistently interpret the data that you're getting back from your, your manufacturing site, create a new rule or a new, you know, uh, machine learning algorithm that you now have uh, applied to the, the data that you've collected and you've made some changes and you now pump that back through the edge. And this is real time happening on people's floors. So that's how we're taking advantage of the data that exists today. And it's much, much more data, lower levels of data, 
you know, all the way down to the, you know, device level. How are customers reacting to this versus what they were doing in the past? Do they get it? Do they naturally absorb this as we have all this data, we can do something with it? Or is it, wow, we, we never knew we had all this data. Well, so we- it's, it's evolutionary, right? So I think that, you know, what happened, it's what's been happening is that we go and we've traditionally looked at maybe just like wafer sort, right, or final test or, you know, SLT or burning or something. But now what's happening is as you get that data, and again, our focus is on the quality of the data, and the speed by which you get it, um, they take that and they say, wow, now I can apply that to another process. Maybe I'm looking at the assembly process. I'm looking at the fab process. I'm looking at different ways of getting more data. So as the architectures, the data architectures are growing, so you can now bring in large amounts of data and do something with them, I think our customer's sophistication is growing that way as well. Plus, you know, in the past, if you went to a, a semiconductor manufacturer and you looked at their staff, you know, how many data scientists do they have on staff or how many machine learning um, people did they have on their staff? And so that's growing as well. So the people are evolving that they get more data. The access to the data is now being used by people within their organization. A lot of the uh, data in the past was siloed and there were silos were set up primarily for efficiency, but they tend to uh, sometimes outlive their usefulness. With data, which doesn't actually uh, go with any traditional silos, how does that work inside of these companies? What sort of problems are you running into? Well, so that is exactly, I like to think of it like a city. So if you look at, you know, the skyscrapers and there's different silos or different, you know, spaces or of data within an organization. And, and if you looked at that data, you know, as a single point of information, it, it's fine, you know, but what's happening is that, you know, this is the manufacturing process that this, you know, if you look at a power module that goes into a car, there's 35 steps in the building of that power module from, you know, developing the silicon carbide, silicon all the way through to a finished module. You need to bring all those sources together. So these data silos, as they historically have been, now we can bring them together into a large data lake. We can bring them in and look at them collectively and determine whether there's any kind of correlation between, you know, at the beginning here where the device is being manufactured to an RMA coming back from the field. So this is again a closed loop opportunity for us to bring those data sources which have historically been siloed into a single environment that allows you to look at it collectively. Again, you couldn't have done that 5 years ago because the you know the 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 technology, the data technology didn't exist that allowed you to bring that much data together. So this is a uh, an approach that people historically have done and if they had a problem they would go look at that different silo. But now what we're suggesting is you bring it all together and look at it together. So data is the great disruptor of a lot of the business processes here, right? Because it's now being used in places that it wasn't used before and actually wasn't even available before. So I think this is a whole new paradigm within a lot of companies. Some companies are more progressive in this area and some people are less. And so what companies are trying to wrestle with is, um, first of all, the security of that data, the, the, the source of that data and then what to do with it, and then how fast do they move in the direction of bringing more and more data sources together, because it has cost implications and it has implications on um, their business model. So what we're seeing is that um, people would like to get more data and access to more data that will help them with their supply chain and their overall, you know, gross margins and their operating margins and efficiency of their process and their, their manufacturing capabilities. But they want to do it in a way that they can manage it, right? And they want to do it in a way that um, that they can, uh, you know, bring the right resources together to make it effective within their organization. So I think it's there's some, you know, the IT organizations, the CIOs, the CTOs, or um, you know, in terms of the IT presence within organizations are growing in terms of people and power. As you add in this kind of efficiency that data will provide, uh, because it does open up all sorts of new doors, do you see this potentially replacing steps in tests? Do you see it uh, augmenting them to uh, what's already existing just to improve the coverage? How does it play together? So I think it's a little bit of both. And so, you know, what what's important to understand is that you know, when you're talking about what we do, you need some way of collecting the data. There's a, there's a sensor, as I would call it, whether it's a wave solder machine, it's an in-circuit machine, it's a, you know, it's a prober with a tester connected to it or whatever. You need to get that data, right? And so that data then, 
allows you to augment it, make that process better, maybe reduce the number of tests you're doing because what you're finding is in that real time, some of those tests aren't helping, they're redundant or you know, they're adding time to your testing you know, process. In some cases, you might be able to reduce burn-in. So if you go back and look at you know, inspection data and you correlate that with your test data, maybe you can reduce the, the, the amount of burn-in you do, or maybe you do sampling, and the same with system level tests. So I don't think it'll ever replace test. It will absolutely augment it and make it more efficient. And it'll allow tests to you know, allow you to move up and down the, the chain in terms of the manufacturing process, further up the chain and down the chain. Doug Elder, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.